the themes from the multiple evaluations and probably the states that have had uh, more evaluations clearly come from the states that um, have implemented early on. There's a lot of evaluation information from Minnesota, a lot from Missouri, and um, in North Carolina we had the Terry Sanford Center for Child and Family Policy at Duke University to conduct all of our evaluations. The themes from all of the um, evaluations is child safety is still paramount in, in both responses, in both tracks, and neither response compromised safety at all. And so when people think because we've become perhaps a little bit more family friendly, a little bit more easy on the family assessment track, that perhaps we're sac sacrificing safety. And the evaluations are saying we haven't sacrificed safety. Now, are they safer? I think that's still the question to be asked, but they're just as safe as if we had done an investigation. Um, here again, it improves family engagement. Um, getting families to agree to work with us, um, we can provide services so much quicker than for it to be so adversarial um, with child welfare. And so family engagement has improved. Here again, uh, repeat maltreatment, substantiations of repeat maltreatment have decreased. Again, enhance family and Child Protective Services staff satisfaction. And I'm sure you've already heard about caseworker retention or your case manager's retention. And what we have learned, especially in my state, is yes, financial support, salaries are important. And I will never, ever say they aren't. But one of the things that I heard loud and clear was we want to be able to say we like our jobs. And if differential response is helping with worker satisfaction in their jobs, that's huge. That keeps retention. I mean, that keeps us from having to retrain workforce all the time. Because social workers in my state have said, if I like my job, I will stay. I need to feel valued. I need to, for someone to help me figure out how to include my family life with my work life so that I'm not working 60, 70, 75 hours a week. Um, is there some flexibility around work scheduling that we can think about? And so I will say differential response seems to have improved uh, worker morale in that way. We have increased community involvement because everything about differential response, while we talk about family engagement, it's also community engagement. It's we're not holding back anymore and thinking we can control everything ourselves. Um, we're coming around the table saying we need everybody's help here. Everybody has a, a piece in this. Um, services are provided much more quickly. Evaluation after evaluation will say that and families that have gone that family assessment response they get services more quickly and you would say why is that and I guess one could hypothesize is if they're willing to work with us then we don't have to deal with that kind of adversarial approach of, of getting over that piece with families families are, are, are ready and willing to receive services families like participating in decisions we're never going to sacrifice safety I mean you've heard me say that already a couple of times here uh, but families like to be included in a decision just like you would like to be included in a decision if somebody was deciding something about your child's life. Um, and so it just sort of makes sense. Cost effectiveness, here again, state by state. Early on, I think every state has found that there have been some startup cost because you've got to retrain your workforce. You have to continuously train and train and coach and coach uh, because you want to hold true to the fidelity of the model. Um, and so there will be some cost, especially early on. And here again, depending on how it's implemented. Um, in most states, there, were, there was no new money to implement differential response because we were responding to the same number of CPS reports as before. It was just how we were responding that changed. The most recent evaluation that I said was issued in July of this year 
Um, the Quality Improvement Center on Alternative Re on Differential Response posed three questions. Are children as safe or safer in alternative response as they are in an investigative response? And I guess the thing here, and I'll, I'll just briefly back up and say, remember an investigative response, that's where we get a report, we can go to school, we can interview the child, we can interview daycare providers, we can do all of that, and then later on we go to the, to the parents and say, we've gotten a report and let's talk about it. I mean, you can already see how that sets that up. If someone came to your door and said, I've been to school and talked to your child, and I've talked to your daycare provider, and I've talked to your doctor, uh, get you a little bit upset, get you a little bit angry. The family assessment response is more going to the family first and saying we want to be respectful, but here's some things we got to do because we do have this report. And so that's a little bit of the difference and that's the question that keeps being asked because we do that contact with the family first instead of like going someplace else to see the child. Everybody worries if we're sacrificing safety and so in every evaluation that I have ever seen on differential response, that's a question that's always been asked. Um, are they as safe as they were if we were doing it the more traditional way? Also, uh, they wanted to know about family engagement, caseworker practice, and services. Is there a difference um, in service provision from alternative response families and investigative response families? And then here again, what are the costs? This is a real wordy PowerPoint, so I'll try to break it down for you. The three sites, remember it was Illinois, Ohio, and Colorado that this study, this evaluation came from. In two of those sites, alternative response families were less likely to be re-referred, and so they didn't come back to the attention of the child welfare agency. The interesting thing, fewer than 5% of children, regardless of what track, ever came into agency custody during that period. Alternative response families were much more likely to get services such as parenting, educational services, um, social supports, while the investigative response families got things like substance abuse services. Now remember, that would make sense to you because investigative response is your more serious cases alternative response or family support, family assessment are your less serious cases. And so when you look at the criteria of what case would go which track or response, it sort of makes sense that investigative families are going to get the more hardcore kinds of services than the alternative response families. Alternative response families receive services more quickly um, and they report here again that they thought their first meeting with CPS was positive as opposed to the investigative assessment response families. They were worried at that first contact with CPS. And you might say, rightly so, but they were worried. Um, and then here again in one site, the family said they were satisfied with the way CPS treated them and they would actually go back to their caseworker, to their social worker if they needed something in the future. So your response, um, your differential response back in, um, from 2004, it was implemented at the local level, a practice called diversion. And it was um, in some ways similar to differential response and then in other ways not so similar. Um, I think I came here in 2010 because Bobby knew me. Um, I think was one of the reasons that I was asked to come and, and do this analysis and because we had implemented uh, differential response in, in North Carolina. This is just a very high level summary of, of some of, of my findings back in, in 2010. Um, <laughs> at that time, you didn't have statewide policy about differential response, about that second track, that uh, family support track. There was no state level policy. Um, I interviewed even some of you around this table uh, and what I heard from a lot of my interviews and even what I heard when I went out to the counties and met with the case managers and supervisors were we don't have a uniform criteria back in 2000 about what went in diversion 
and what went investigations. And so there was just no established criteria. I mean, it was sort of like no one knew what to expect from diversion because it could be as different from one county to another and the counties would be sitting right next door to each other. Um, here again, there was issues around data and um, stakeholders in 2010 were saying, we don't trust our data here. Um, it feels like we're playing perhaps a numbers game. And then there was some lack of trust of, of the agency um, about the implementation of diversion. And then here again, the whole use of that word, it meant so many different things. Even when I were interviewing stakeholders who I thought and who didn't know your child welfare system, they were using it differently. And so I, you know, I go back to my hotel room at night and I scratch my head and I go, well, this person used it this way and this person used it this way and they're not the same. And so, hence, there was an awful lot of confusion uh, in, in 2010. I think a lot of that confusion has been cleared up and, and we'll, we'll talk about that um, a little bit. But that was sort of your experience. You um, started your experience with allowing your local, your counties, to develop their own criteria. And I think you're going to hear from me that we need that kind of state level criteria so that all families are treated the same. So what are the impacts, the benefits, and the challenges? And I guess what I'd like for you to pay attention to is what I have underneath here. Differential response really restructures everything that you do in CPS from your casework foundation because we have to have a set of values that we hold true to. Um, in some states you will hear them say we um, have family-centered practice. In other states they'll say we're child-centered and family focused and so it takes on different labels different places but you really have to hold true to your values in and what makes a case manager want to come to work here every day um, and do this kind of work what difference do I make and what do I hold true to in my heart um, your training will have to change um, to fully implement uh, family support your differential response supervision has to train has to change and then there has to be a component of coaching if anyone ever, ever thought that you could train a caseworker and say, we got them trained, now we can go on and do something else, really, really wrong. Um, what we find out is training needs to be followed up with what now across the country is being called as coaching. Um, there needs to be that kind of reinforcement because knowing enough about having worked in counties myself as a new social worker, I would go get training, I'd come back and I'd go, okay, this is the way I understand we're supposed to do it. And a supervisor who had 30 years of experience would look at me and go, honey, we don't do that way, that way in Nash County. You know, I, I know you heard about it in Raleigh, but we just don't do it that way here. Mm -hmm. So uh, a lot of things happen. Uh, as it relates to training. So you need that follow-up coaching. And then here again, practice has to change.